In the midst of a crossover boom in the luxury segment, designer Julian Honig unveiled his vision of a Fellowship of the Ring sports crossover, the Audi Cross Coupe Quattro. In sketches, this project still looks attractive. In its most modern form, its style was subtly reminiscent of the time when auto union cars were top not only in Le Mans. In metal, it turned out a little more boring, but the prototype made it possible to get an idea of backslash U200B backslash U200B future compact crossover, which became the Audi Q3. The serial sample appeared in 2011 and was built on the same platform as the Golf 6, Audi A3, and most importantly, the VW Tiguan, which has a lot in common with our hero. I would even say that if you want to know the advantages and disadvantages of the Audi Q3, read the Tiguan article. But this, of course, will not be the whole truth. By the way, it is interesting to note that the debut of the crossover took place at the Shanghai Auto Show, and not in Europe or America, as one might assume. Five motors were installed on the Q3 during the entire production period. The base was 1.4 TFSI, familiar to everyone by the mass of the group's cars from Skoda Fabia to, in fact, the Audi Q3. It was aggregated with front-wheel drive and a six-speed manual for Europe and a seven-speed automatic for the Russian market. The motor is fast, high-torque, economical, but continues the sad story of 1.8T turbo engines, which required overhaul more often than we would like to run 150,000 kilometers. However, cars with a 1.4 engine appeared only a year ago and so far the owners are not particularly worried. From the start of production, the power units were 2.0 liter, both petrol and diesel, all with the turbine, a pair for each type of fuel. They differed in the settings of the intake system power, traction, and price. The base was considered 2.0 TFC with a capacity of 170 liters. With and a maximum torque of 280 newton meters, its more powerful version was supercharged to 211 horsepower with and up to 300 newton meters at higher, however, speeds. The engines turned out to be economical and environmentally friendly, but suffering from some inherent problems. The first and main one is sure oil. In a different way, oil consumption of up to 1.5 liters per 1,000 kilometers on a serviceable engine cannot be named. Flat pistons and thin rings are part of the problem. It seems that VW saved on the material of the cylinder wall coating. Those who ran over 100 demonstrate frank scuffs and scratches. Soot on pistons, on valves, failures of knock sensors, catalyst and oxygen sensors, all these are eggs from one basket. Repair seems expensive only until the turbine fails. That's when the owner will know what is really expensive. This rarely happens, but if it doesn't fall within the warranty period, it eases the owner's pocket by 80,000 rubles when buying spare parts from hand. And this is the price without the cost of labor and warranty. Interestingly, tuning kits sometimes work more reliably than the original. If you dig into the Borg Warner catalogs, you can order exactly the same turbine, but without the VW emblem for 50,000 rubles. And so with everything, a Philips bulb will cost half as much as a VAG sticker. Alas, these are the realities of the current automotive world. Two diesel engines with the same volume of 1968 cubic centimeters develop 140 and 177 forces, depending on the firmware. They are very economical and powerful. A more powerful one demonstrates a maximum of 380 newton meters of torque and consumes about 6 liters of fuel outside the city. I must say that this engine, which has the BKD index, is the best choice for the Audi Q3, at least better than petrol. It is much more reliable, and its service is a little more expensive. And even then, given the presence of a turbine and TFC, this difference is leveled to negligible. However, diesel engines also have their own disadvantages. First on the list are, of course, problems with injectors, which come from two manufacturers, from Bosch and Siemens. Prices for new ones are 180 and 300 euros respectively. Yes, I almost forgot, these are pump injectors, and therefore expensive. If the motor overheats, and this also happens, then the head of the block cracks, which will cost 36,000 rubles without removal and installation and other work to replace it. A sudden headache can also be added by DPF filters, popularly nicknamed soot. They get clogged pretty quickly, and the engine runs worse, consuming more and more fuel. Then the engine goes into afterburning mode, which does not always end well. Then the filter needs to be replaced or cleaned in the service. To thoroughly clean the filter yourself, the car must be well thrown along the highway, but the city crowd will surely destroy it. 
a less powerful version of the diesel engine, 2.0 TDICR, allows you to repair nozzles and generally gives the owner a minimum of problems. P. Problems arose with the EGR system, which was completely replaced in 2014 when restyling came out. Replacing the cooler, and it was he who refused, costs at least 12,000 rubles. A sign of problems is floating idle. The Audi Q3 was equipped with the well-known DSG-7 dual-clutch automatic transmission, the one that does not shift gears in a traffic jam for a long time, and then shifts car K. So many copies have already been broken around this box that I can only write one thing, there will be no problems, or they will appear much later if you press on the gas smoothly and change the oil at least once every 60,000 kilometers. Better, every 40,000. And always ride in sport mode. Yes, that's right, sport mode and smooth throttle. Drive Audi Q3 for the most part complete, implemented quite cunningly. In principle, there is a permanent full with the 40,60 thrust distribution in favor of the rear axle. And as a differential lock, there is a fifth generation Haldex clutch. The unit is extremely reliable and durable. If you absolutely mercilessly slip and gas, then the oil channels can become clogged. So far, this has not happened with the Audi Q3 and no one knows how much it will cost. Probably expensive. Those who wanted comfort from Audi will definitely get it. Moreover, comfort, which is expressed not only in soft chairs, good sound insulation, but also in terms of equipment. The close Q3 brother Tiguan, even in the most expensive configuration, falls short of Audi, where there is an MMI communication interface, rich trim, and a lot of security systems and all kinds of assistance. Surprisingly, all this works reliably and efficiently. True, there was, they say, a batch assembled immediately after the New Year holidays, where everything in a row refused, from the electric amplifier to the seat drive, but these are most likely bikes launched by competitors. What is true is that the interior can creak after a couple of years of operation. Leather, plastic and something else in the depths. The creaks, however, are barely audible over the curses of the driver, who is trying to figure out the management of the MMI. Suddenly discovered scratches on the plastic upset no less than the confusing control of the onboard computer. Fortunately, they appear only where the legs of passengers and the driver live, so few people pay attention to them. In general, buying an Audi must learn to rise above these mundane troubles. Just think, gas discharge bulbs of 200 euros burned out. Not at the same time. The lane-keeping assistant gets confused in the markings, and in winter it doesn't understand anything at all, but still, you are driving not him. You have to drive in the sports mode of the box with the consumption twice as large as the factory data, but without jerks. In short, Audi opens up to you a world that floats somewhere in the upper layers of the atmosphere. True, periodically putting the owner on the sinful earth, but only in order to collect the victim with rustling pieces of paper and ascend again. 